Hey everyone, so in this episode I'm going to show you how to set up migrations for our project structure. So if we go into the shop UI and we open our startups file, we haven't registered our database yet. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go on our dependencies. I'm going to press F2 to copy the name here. Services. Add DB context. And we're going to add it here. So, um, so let's try to add a reference for this. And if you see, we want to add a reference. It shows us the option for reference, refer to add the reference of shop.database. And we don't want to do that because our application already contains this reference. So what we would really want to do is add a reference to our application rather than our database. So let's go into our dependencies, add a reference, and get in our application. Yep. So now that that's in, we can do, use the shop.database namespace and bring in everything we want there. Okay, so let's go ahead and pass in some options. Uh, we want to use SQL Server. And for our config, we want to use default connection, right? Let's copy that. Go into our application settings. And in here, let's register the default. Actually, I just copied it. So there we go. Default connection string. Again, if you don't have in the local database installed go into the visual studio installer and install it it's free and you can use it it should be installed by default but if you don't have it go install it so again press f2 copy the name and type in the server so this is the server we're going to use and now database i'm going to say my shop and now Trusted connection, true, and multiple active sets, active result sets, true. Okay, so hard part is done. Let's close this. Okay, so now let's try to break everything and Add migrations, so we want to initialize our single product. So, so here we can see is that the assembly hasn't been matched. So basically, what it's telling us, right? Uh, your configuration is in shop.ui, and your context is in shop.database. I don't know where to put the migrations, right? So what we can do is it tells us right here we can specify this object uh sorry this option for it to use this assembly so let's go ahead and try that okay so after adding that uh let's run it again okay now let's see what we get you can see the migrations folder here and if we inspect the migrations we can see the user table getting at it and uh, should be our products here at the bottom so yeah um cool so the migrations are created but they are residing in our ui not what we want and the reason for that is we created the database project to store database related stuff and migrations are database related so we don't want them in our UI layer so let's go ahead and remove that let's go into our um, command line let's exit and let's cd shop dot database so you can do cd shop dot d tab and it should fill it for you so and let's just run the same command we did in our original project. What happens when you run the migrations is .NET EF is a separate DLL to .NET and um, packages included in .NET Core contain the tooling for Entity Framework and that allows you to run these migrations 
and when you do .NET AF, it will do something, something like a small boot of your UI project or of your project. It will try to start it. It will go to your program. It will go to your startup, and it will look for this. So it actually tries to start your application. So right here in our database project, we have no program. We we have no start. It can find the starting point. So to go around this, we need to provide the tooling that and not include the rest of entity framework. Sorry, not the rest of the .NET Core. We don't want to exclude .NET Core, but we want to include the entity framework tooling. So to put it quite simply, .NET and DF are two separate DLLs. I hope that makes sense. So it's like two worlds, or rather one world inside another. And if you don't have .NET, which is your um, app, you cannot access the EF part. All right. So in our database, we don't have the .NET, so we cannot uh, access the EF part. So what we need to do is we need to bring in the tooling. Let's go ahead, close this. Let's right click on our project and let's enter CS project. So what we need is let's grab these two and let's copy them. So what we need is entity framework, design, entity framework, SQL server. Okay. So now that we have that, Let's go ahead and try to run this again. Okay, cool. So now it's a different error. So now it can access the NTC framework tooling prior to this previous error where it just went, I don't know what, what I don't know what this is, right? It, it kind of it recognized that we provide the tooling to scaffold migrations so now what we want to do what this says is basically i have the db context but i have no configuration in it and it's not living anywhere so you don't have a you still don't have a startup project right what we do in this situation is let's go in here and let's specify a flag or rather right go in here and do a help. All right, I couldn't find the command and options, so let's clear the screen. All right. So what we want to do now? Let's bring up our NT framework, and in here, what we want to do is specify our startup project. Not in quotes. So All right, and we want to go to our shop dot. UI. Okay. And now let's run this. So now we get the configuration from the UI layer and we apply the migrations in our. Right. So, stupidly enough, forgot this here. <laughs> okay. So let's run this again. So, yeah, as I was saying, uh, now the project gets the configuration from the UI layer and creates the migrations in our database layer, right? So here it is. And now if we want to .NET if database update, we'll see the same error. And uh, again, that's because it can't see the configuration. So same as before, we can do is just highlight this part. You don't even need to press Control C. And then what you can do is you can click here. No, nope, can't click. You have to navigate and right click. Never mind that backfired. So let's just copy this, paste this here, and instead of migrations add, 
let's do database update okay so let's check our database oh, get away guy okay database my shop there it is let's see what tables we get we got our product and we got our ASP net users identity stuff so we're ready to implement authentication and product now enough of that I know I said we we're gonna put a product in but this is an important step and I felt like doing a bit of extra explanation so next episode that's when we're gonna add our first product into our database but for now thank you for watching if you have any questions leave them in the comment if you enjoy the series subscribe like it will help my channel out as always see you in the next episode